Well, we're back at it again. I hope you guys enjoyed your Thanksgiving weekend. Mine was great. I enjoyed the couple of days that I took off last week. Played a little bit of golf, got some things done around the house, met my family for lunch yesterday for my birthday. Got home yesterday afternoon about 12 o'clock, 12.15, turned on NFL Red Zone like I always do. I was in a great mood until about 3.30 yesterday afternoon. From 3.30 to I don't know, 5.45, 6 o'clock when I finally turned it off. You didn't want to be around me. My poor dog, she left the living room, made her way under my bed. I was absolutely disgusted by what I saw yesterday from my Saints. Defense played well. Defense played well. I actually feel bad for the Saints' defense. You hold a team to 13 points on the road, you expect to win that game. But it's kind of hard to win when your offense puts up zero points. I said on Twitter yesterday, I am officially, I am done with the Saints. I'm done with them. I am not exposing myself to this garbage anymore. I'm quitting on my team. There are two reasons I'm quitting on the Saints. Number one, they are absolutely unwatchable. It would be one thing if they were losing competitively. It would be different if the Saints were entertaining. They're not. This team is boring. These games are painful to sit through. But the main reason I am quitting on my team, I'm quitting on the Saints, this team has quit on Dennis Allen. They have no faith in their head coach. Turnovers, penalties, missed assignments, complete disorganization, lack of confidence, lack of motivation. Those are all signs of a poorly coached team. I woke up this morning hoping to see headlines saying Gail Benson's finally joining the rest of us and quitting on Dennis Allen too. I was hoping to see the headline, Dennis Allen is fired. Instead, I woke up to the opposite. I woke up seeing headlines begging us not to quit on Bob Griner. Um, us normal people, we are not quitting. We're not giving up on Bob Griner. You see, in order to quit something, you first have to be committed to it. You first have to care about it. We have never cared about Brittany Griner or who the shit fucks like to erroneously call BG. Ooh, I love BG. He is a legend. He is a multi-talented shit fuck. Not only is he a legendary pretend basketball player, he also invented the term bling bling. Right now, there is a lot of hysteria. There is a lot of concern in the community of wanker spankers. They want you to know they're extremely worried. Those evil Russians, they are refusing to give the exact location as to where Bob is being imprisoned. We know she's being held in Mordovia, a prison about 250 miles from Moscow. But we don't know which pod she's in. We don't know her cell number. If you're a pirate pounder, this is bad, bad news. I mean, how are you supposed to send Bob heartfelt love letters? How are you supposed to put money on her book so she can stay stocked up on cucumbers? Where are we supposed to send emotional support shovels? And believe me, when you hear about these prison conditions, you will realize how much Bob's going to need his emotional support shovel over the next nine or ten years. According to The Nation, Bob Griner is being forced to endure horrific conditions in prison. You're not going to believe this. Brittany Griner is being forced to do something that she's never had to do. She has to work. According to The Nation, the BG could be working up to 16 hours a day. I'm sure this is a form of culture shock. Brittany Griner She's not used to manual labor. For years, she has been collecting six figures in woke welfare, amazing handfuls of people with her unique ability to come up with creative ways to airball layups. She's not used to working with her hands. Her knees have been her primary source of income. BG is one of the best when it comes to kneeling for social justice causes. Her knees have brought her endorsement deals along with fame and notoriety. Now, she's having to work with her hands, sewing uniforms for the same prison guards who could supposedly be mistreating her. According to The Nation, Prisons in Mordovia, they are notorious for their bigotry, racism, and homophobia. They also claim that residents near the prison were surprised that someone with the legendary status of Brittany Griner would be sent to such a dump. Um, okay. I look at it a bit differently. 
You can make the case Russian officials, they were actually doing her a favor. They wanted to make sure her extended vacation was comfortable. The BG, she is used to living in dump conditions here in America. The Russians, they were just making sure her accommodations were the same. I did some digging. I was curious if Russian citizens, everyday people, if they were really surprised that a woke superstar was being so harshly punished. I found an article in the Moscow Times which claims to be an independent news source in Russia. Now, to be fair, most, if not all, Russian media outlets are state-run. The Russian government heavily promotes propaganda through the media, but it's no different from the mainstream media here in America. But according to the Moscow Times, most Russian citizens are unfamiliar with the BG. When asked about the punishment of receiving nine years for a little bit of weed, most people replied back, Who the fuck is Bob Greiner? In other words, Brittany Griner is just as famous in Russia as she is here in America. The handful of people that were familiar with this case, they told the Moscow Times, Brittany Griner is getting exactly what she deserves. Now, I know this is a foreign concept for the shit fucks living here in America, but judging from this article, it seems like Russian citizens believe in crime and punishment. If you commit a crime, you don't receive a pleasure pat on the ass. If you assault Granny Gertrude on the subway, your punishment isn't sensitivity training. You're not released on your own recognizance. You go to jail. 50-year-old Svetlana said the law is the same for everyone in Russia, big wigs and ordinary people. Now, obviously, Svetlana is unfamiliar with the BG. Brittany Griner, she's not classified as a big wig or an ordinary person. As you guys know, she falls into the special classification, the marginalized group set aside for identifiers, the shit fuck. Olga Romanov is the head of a Russian organization that fights for and defends the rights of inmates in Russia. The mainstream media in America, they are claiming the conditions for Brittany Griner are horrific. Even after Russia made accommodations to make her feel at home in the dump. I know it's not her home dump, but at least they attempted to replicate dump conditions to make her feel comfortable. The media in America claims these conditions are inhumane, unfair. It's unjust, damn it! This is the worst prison in the world! According to Olga Romanov, the conditions are completely normal. Not only that, she claims there are prisons in Russia that are much, much, much worse than the prison Brittany Griner is calling home for the next nine years. Now look... I think we can all agree. Nine years, that is too harsh for trying to smuggle some vape cartridges. Hell, in my opinion, nine hours would be too harsh of a punishment. I know I joke around a lot with Brittany Griner, but she doesn't deserve this. I don't think the punishment fits the crime. But the mainstream media, they are not doing her any favors. To their credit, they're doing their best to keep Brittany Griner in the mainstream. They don't want you forgetting about Bob like Eminem felt people forgot about Dre 20 years ago. The shit fucks in the media, they are angry, and they're angry with you. They are appalled. They're dumbfounded by the lack of support Brittany Griner's receiving from normal people. After conducting an extensive investigation, they have finally figured out why the BG's not receiving your support. Check out this tweet from John Feinstein, who works at the Preparation H factory disguised as the Washington Post. My fellow nerds, I have cracked the code. I have figured out why our object of worship has been rejected by normal people. It all comes down to three of our favorite boner words. Grab your hand lotion and prep for spanking as I recite them. Mythical racism. Ooh. Mythical misogyny. Oh, yes, I'm almost there. Homophobia. Yes, the hat trick. Pass the towel. World-renowned shitfuck. Michael Eric Dyson. He repeated this same sentiment on a recent episode of Drink Champs. Now, for those who are unfamiliar, Michael Eric Dyson, he is a professional race baiter. He has inspired people like Jamel Hill and Joy Reid to exploit their community to make millions of dollars. When asked why Brittany Griner was given a harsh sentence and why she's not receiving support from normal Americans, Michael Eric Dyson said, 
It's because she challenges sexual norms. She's a dominant ball player, a cultural icon. Even LeBron James had to admit that. This black woman, had she been anybody else, even a straight black woman would have received more support than a black woman married with a black wife. Um, didn't he just violate the woke commandments? The last I checked, misgendering was a direct violation. He kept calling Bob Griner a woman when it is abundantly clear Bob identifies as a male birthing person. And what is this shit about Brittany Griner being a cultural icon? Are you out of your fucking mind? LeBron James. You might not like it, but LeBron James is a cultural icon. Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. Those are icons. Do you want to put Bob Griner in the same class with these people? Like I said, they are not doing Brittany Griner any favors. Matter of fact, they are eliminating any chance of public support she might receive. Because what the media is doing is reinforcing why the public has no sympathy for Brittany Griner. Right now, the media is accusing you of mythical racism, mythical misogyny, homophobia. They're claiming you don't support Brittany Griner because she falls into all three marginalized groups. But the reason we don't support the BG, she spent years accusing us of the same thing. People don't support the WNBA because they're misogynist. They don't want to see black women succeed. She pushed to have the national anthem outright banned at WNBA games. She not only kneeled during the national anthem, she eventually quit coming out for it altogether. Brittany Griner claimed the national anthem doesn't represent black people. She argued the playing of the national anthem is out of place at sporting events. I don't hear the national anthem at Walmart. I don't hear it at Six Flags. Why should I be subjected to this hurtful song when I'm massaging my emotional support shovel in the dump? The lack of support for Brittany Griner has absolutely nothing to do with her race, her gender, or her sexuality. If Taylor Lorenz were locked up in a Russian prison, normal people would feel the same way. Matter of fact, they keep talking about these exchanges. Why don't we swap Taylor Lorenz for Brittany Griner? Bring the BG back home, send that intolerable fuck Taylor Lorenz over to Russia. All kidding aside, this has nothing to do with her race or sexuality. It has everything to do with the content of Brittany Griner's public character. You can't disrespect people. You can't disrespect the country and expect sympathy in return. Now, me personally, I, I mean, I think she's served enough time already. I mean, it's time for Brittany Griner to be released. Maybe she returns home with a new appreciation for her country. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. But what do you think? Is it time for Brittany Griner to come home? Do you think the media is doing her any favors by accusing us, accusing you of not supporting her because of her race and sexuality? I think they are hurting the cause, but well, let me know what you think. I don't know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.